whenever you want to start. Okay. So, your name is Del. Um, so, tell me when you were born. I was born uh, in uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, August 20th, 1926, to Frank and Olga Irwin, my mother and father. I had two brothers, Carl and Frank. And uh, I was raised in the house in southern, in uh, South Chicago, Illinois, until the age of two when I developed severe bronchial asthma. And uh, I found out that I couldn't live with my parents anymore. My father was an alcoholic. And so my grandparents very graciously took me into their home in Oak Park, Illinois, which is a little suburb of Chicago. And so I went to, uh, about the age of five, they moved me over to my par my grandparents and my two aunties' house, and they raised me uh, on, until I became an adult. Um, while I was there, uh, it was a very short walking distance to a Lutheran school. So that's where I went attended Christ Lutheran School from first grade through eighth grade. And across the street was the church. And eventually, many years, a few years after that, my husband and I were married there, oh, which was nice. So I went through Oak Park High School, and that was in 1944. And was I can remember vividly the day that Pearl Harbor had uh, bombed uh, Hawaii. I was at, had gone to visit my parents for the day. It was a Sunday, and uh, I can remember. So I was 15 years old, and I remember how vivid it, it was the fact that that they had bombed. It was a terrible thing to happen. My brother, my youngest brother, younger brother, was. Um, in the service at that time. My older brother couldn't serve because he had, he was a chemist in a seal mill and I lost the fingers in his right hand. So he couldn't hold a rifle. So he couldn't go. Uh, but I learned from very, very young, as a young woman, young girl, to be very independent because I went from, started to travel from Oak Park to Chicago. I would take an elevated train and then a subway and then a streetcar to get to my parents' home. And I did that as a very young age. And because of that, I've become a very independent woman. That's great. Uh, so um, that pretty well takes me up through that age. Uh, my brother served um, uh, in the, the uh, army and was with the flamethrowers. It was a very dangerous thing. And he was over in Guadalcanal, some of the very vivid places they had in World War II. But he came through just fine, although it affected him later on in life. Uh, my older brother died of alcoholism when he was 43. Uh, eventually, uh, when I became uh, 18, did that pretty well takes me up to my 18th birthday. Is that okay. pretty well? Did I miss anything? No, <laughs> no. Can you talk a little bit about your best friends when you were in my primary or high school? Oh, my! Well, oh, I had a very dear friend. She and I did everything together. We dressed alike. We went everywhere together. We roller skated and uh, we went to modeling school together. And uh, oh, we uh, went to art school. Everything we did, we did together. Uh, we've been friends for life. We met in high school. She was my very dearest friend. I uh, had a, a couple of other friends, but she really was through high school. She and I did everything together. Yeah. Um, um, when was the first person you dated? Like when, what, what, what age were you when you started dating? When my first date? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me see. How old was I? I must have been around, uh, I had a pretty secluded life when I was living with my grandparents. I wasn't allowed to do too much, which was fine, mm -hmm. because they were very loving people. I think 17 was when I went to uh, Midshipman's Ball. They had uh, the servicemen would come into the city, and I met him roller skating. I went, we went to these roller skating rinks, and uh, lots of fun doing it, fancy dancing and all that on skates, roller skates. And so I was invited to the Midshipman's Ball. That must have been around. I may be 18, 19, something like that. That's, uh -huh. That's but then I went to college and everything changed then. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, what college did you go to? I went to Grinnell College in Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It was a small school, which was a very good place for me to go, going to a small school for someone who uh, was kind of quiet life and so forth. And it was there that I met my future husband. Yeah, and he was Lutheran, and Mr. Hulkren was the, uh, he had been in the service and uh, he had already had two years of college. So when he came back, he was four years older than I am. All the men started to come back to school then after this, the war and they were all looking for wives. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I met him. And uh, that's where I began my, pro my professional career. I received, I became a, a speech pathologist. Although at the time that I started that field, it was only just beginning. Very few people knew about speech teachers then, you see. Mm -hmm. And so the profession was just beginning and now, of course, it's quite a, a well-known field yeah. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever change your occupation? Did you ever stay with that occupation for your life? Or did oh, you yes. Well, I was a speech pathologist for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I uh, redid my bachelor degree in Grinnell College, and then I went to Northwestern and studied about audiology, which is the mm -hmm. science of hearing. And then I studied under the sisters at Loyola University, and that's where I received all my training for the uh, deaf and hard of hearing. And uh, my first year of teaching was in Rockford, Illinois. It was my first year out of college, and I lived with the superintendent of schools in Rockford, Illinois. They had a little room for me. And I stayed there all week, and during the weekend, I took the Greyhound bus home every weekend back to Chicago. And I, my husband would, my husband to be, was always would meet me at the uh, bus. And uh, so I did that my first year, and then the next year we were married. And then I was a coordinator for the hearing conservation program for the Chicago schools. And then uh, very happily became pregnant and had three beautiful children. And uh, then I took 13 years off to raise my children. And then from then on, I continued with my career after they were safe, ready in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were your children's names? Uh, Karen is the oldest and she's, she's a graphic designer. She's not married. Uh, Craig is a geologist. Karen went to the University of San Francisco. Craig went to the University of Humboldt. And my youngest is Paula, and uh, she went to Chico State University. Uh -huh. That's where my brother went. <laughs> uh -huh. um, did you ever have time to travel? And oh, uh, yes, indeed. That's one of my greatest, greatest loves, yes. I have to kind of, can't do too much now, but my husband and I travel the world over together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite place that you went? Oh, there were so many wonderful places. Uh, uh, well, I remember my husband won a trip to, to uh, Europe and we went first class with everything. First class on the airplane, first class everything. That was my first time. Now, if somebody paid the whole bill for us, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, we went through uh, all of the European cities and then we took our children uh, in a, uh, a family trip uh, when I think when Paula graduated from college, we took all of our children to Sweden. My husband was Swedish and Norway and uh, Germany and uh, England. We just traveled all together. It was a wonderful trip to do as a family together. Mm -hmm. But we, and my brother and his wife and my husband and I had did many trips through Europe and through Australia, and Africa and what have you. So we've, we've traveled the world over. One of my great dreams, yeah. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Um, you said that you got married in a Lutheran church and that's where yes, um, you did. Uh -huh. um, so what was your favorite Bible verse or part of the Bible? Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. It's, yeah. it's helped me through many things that I've been through in my life. I always remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, so what church were you raised in? Pardon me? What church were you raised in? In the Christ Lutheran Church, that was the one in Oak Park, mm -hmm. and then what, as my husband was a Lutheran in college, so we went to church all the time in college, and then his parents were very happy to hear that I was, was marrying a Lutheran, and so we've always, uh, our children, our, our son Craig, uh, well, you probably know that our church started in our living room over in in, uh, uh, in Westlake uh, and uh, 
Pastor Lawson was walking through the area looking to start a new church in our area and my husband was out mowing the lawn and he talked about being a Lutheran. My husband said, well, come right in. Here we are. <laughs> and that's how it started. So my son Craig was the first in the first confirmation class. Karen already had been uh, confirmed up in Walnut Creek where we had lived before. And then Paula was uh, confirmed here also. So this has been very much their church too. Awesome. Um, what are your favorite hobbies and what do you use your most favorite? Oh, well, <clears throat> I, uh, I love to play cards. One of the things that happened to me, which was kind of an aside thing that I never had planned in my life was when I was um, one of my latter years of teaching as a speech therapist in, in the Conejo schools, I uh, was appointed a mentor teacher and I was given the opportunity to teach other teachers how to teach oral language in the classroom because the speech therapist has a pull-out program. Usually they pull the children in their little room and they but I had the opportunity to go into all the classrooms and I was invited in kindergarten, first and second grades in, in the district. And while I was doing that, I had an aide and I was using puppets in the, in the classroom. And my aide said, you know, you have to sell that at the, at the Harvest Festival. And I said, oh, I didn't do that. So she said, go ahead and try. So I thought, well, I'll try. So I started, I developed a few things, a little glove, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, this turned out, we did this for 14 years. My husband and I handmade every one of our, our puppets. We I, I developed 24 different sets. Uh, we sold it with a little book of puppets. So my hobby there for 10 years, for 14, was to, to go into these large and crafts, arts and crafts shows, the big, big ones, you know. And uh, I developed this, his, something I never thought I would ever have happened, but I, it was really a very wonderful gift because it kept my husband very busy because he got to, <laughs> to help me make the puppets and he got to sell them. So that was a big hobby of ours. Um, did you ever like to read? I love to read. What was your favorite book? Oh, I, I, I belong to a wonderful book club. We've been together for 14 years, and uh, uh, right now I just bought uh, Barbara King Solver's new book. I, I loved her book before, but we, we each week, each month, we uh, there are 10 of us, and we choose a different book and so forth. So I, I have just a wonderful thing. I love to read. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, let's go move on to music. Um, what was your favorite type of music when you were a child and growing up? Well, we don't. We were in the time when people did a lot of dancing together mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, we did like, uh, oh, we did slow dancing. And uh, I went to a lot of dances when I was in college. My husband, it's a picture of my husband and I. When we were in college, we danced. We did many, many dances together. Uh, but we had to have the, uh, the swing. Yeah. Boogie Woogie and all that. And finally, you, you know a little bit about it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, slow dancing was nice too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you ever go to any concerts? Have I ever been to a concert? Yes. Oh, yes, many a concert, yeah. One of my most, one of my most favorite was with Johnny Vip Mathis. I saw him in, uh, in Las Vegas and I was sitting right, he was sitting there on a stool and I was right next to him. And I met him, he was right across him. I'll never forget, it was just a, just a wonderful experience. But I saw many, many special people. Uh, I saw Elvis Presley and uh, I saw Maurice Chevalier, some of these people you may not know, but uh, we saw Many, many headliners that were, uh, we like to go to concerts and see that kind of thing, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, did you have a favorite song from any of them? Oh, gosh. Uh, no, I can't think of one. Uh, Till We Meet Again, that would be one. I have to think about it a little bit. I don't know, yeah. It's a difficult question. Um, I guess the last one would be, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, uh, well, somebody who really cared about people, uh, that I was a good wife, a good mother, good friend, good Christian. 
Any other questions? Um, I'd, I'd like to know a little bit more about how the church started in your living room. How they filled it? Well, you know, as I look back, I was trying to think of some of the people that I remember, like the Fioris were there, McGinnis's. Uh, so many, so many have gone now. Uh, Pastor and Joyce. Uh, but really, I think those are Matilda. How long did it meet in your living room? Pardon me? How long was it in your living room? Not not too long, because soon after that, we sometimes we went, to, you know, on Agora and uh, Triumphal Canyon Road, those homes that are adjacent to the lake, that was all empty. There was nothing there. So sometimes we'd have our, our services right there in nice weather. Mm -hmm. And then we went over to... Uh, that area off of um, the clubhouse and that uh, mm. um, little clubhouse off of um, Triumpho and uh, Agora mm. towards Hampshire. There was a little clubhouse and there's a, a subdivision. I can't think of the name of it now. That's, we did that quite often. So we had services in our house to begin with and then just Kind of played it by ear. How did you gather Tried different up the, places, you know. How did you gather up that first group? I can't hear that. Huh? How did you gather up the first group of people? For the, Say that again. The first group of people. How did you, how did those people come to your house? How did they come? Yeah. How did they find these people to come? Good. Well, Pastor Lawson must oh. have must have because CLU was closely. He Pastor Lawson was confined to a certain area because by according to the Constitution or whatever, they could only have so many Lutheran churches in the area, right. and Royal uh, American Hawaiian was just beginning that whole area. The Russell Ranch was opening up and everything. So uh, they needed a Lutheran church in that area. He couldn't go here and he couldn't go there, but he could go where we lived. Mm -hmm. And that's why he was one. But he knew some of these people from Cal Lutheran okay. because we had the McGinnises, you know, uh -huh. Fioris from Cal Lutheran. And we had the Browns. I don't know if you knew Charlie and Sandy Brown. <clears throat> he was one of the regents of Cal Lutheran at the time. Uh, and many other Lutheran people within the new people coming in. And they had children. We had quite a few children, too. See how the demographics have changed now, uh, but uh, that's was all. We didn't have a very large congregation, but but we were loyal mm -hmm. and and uh, enthusiastic. Wanted to get settled into the area, you know, and that's the way it started. Um, may I ask a, a question on how you're feeling right now? Was this fairly easy to do for you? Was this how I feel? Was this difficult for you to do this interview? Oh, not at all. This easy? No, I'm not used to talking about myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, but I think you know I often think because I, I, I with my Stephen ministry I went in and served a number of care receivers, and I looked at those and I thought of all the stories those people have to tell. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful thing! So I think we need to hear from our older people yes, as to some of the things that they had to do. Because I remember my they tell me my parents went through the depression, but I don't remember anybody mm -hmm. being deprived except my family was dysfunctional, you know. But I mean, I don't remember people saying, well, they couldn't eat or anything, but it was a great depression. You'll hear about it, but I don't remember very much about it because mm -hmm. we always had something to eat, you know. My fa Of course, my father was a fireman and a fireboat in, in, in uh, Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he always had a job, you know. May I ask a question of Sarah? Pardon me? May I ask a question of Sarah? Sure. Sarah, did you enjoy doing this? Was this easy? I did, yeah. Did I you? I like learned a lot of things from Aww. people, so it was yeah. really nice to Yeah, yeah it really is it. interesting, and I'm so interested in the young people, too, because they're so wonderful, you know? Oh, they are. They have such a bright future. What, what, are, you, what are you studying to, to be now? Uh, I'm still in high school. Yeah? So I'm just doing that, but um, I'm thinking of being a cosmetologist uh -huh. for hairstyling. Wonderful. But, uh, Good. That's a good profession, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I think that's it. Well, you've been a great interview <laughs> subject. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, Dale, is there anything else you want to share with us that wasn't asked? 
Anything else I wanted to share? That, that wasn't asked. No. About your life. About anything about your life. Your anything else about your life, life or how you how you you know? Well, I've had a wonderful life. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I bless. The, I ask. I thank the Lord every day when I get up for another day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very because I was so independent when I was young. I'm so independent now. Mm -hmm. I've learned to be. Chuck's gone 18 years. He was the love of my life. Yeah. And uh, a good man for me. Yeah. You were a good woman for him. Mm. Oh, you both had a wonderful mm -hmm. marriage. I know you did. Well, thank you so much. Oh, yes. Sarah, thank you wonderful. so much. I think it, uh, yeah. you interview all the other people, learn something about each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of service for the young people. Yeah. To have That's an wonderful. interest in the history of our elders. Yeah. Thanks again. Well, I think it's great you're doing this with the young people, too. Right. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am.